Let me just know. So I'll stop sharing. I can speak through it, uh, Karam, if we're having an issue with the, with the video. Well, I'll just talk through the rest of the presentation. That will be fine. Sorry, can you hear me? I got stuck there. Technological, <laughs> yes. technical difficulties, as we call it. I will play the video now, <laughs> just a minute. I think you might be stuck again. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, why don't you continue and then we'll come back to the video in a minute. Yes. Yeah, please don't worry. <laughs> we can talk about the university. It was, it was one of these um, videos that likes to do the fly through thing. So anyway, this is our campus in the heart of Glasgow. So if you ever get a chance to come and visit us, um, we are directly in the middle of Glasgow City, which is Scotland's biggest city. Um, and it's quite a vibrant place to be. You know, it's quite lively and quite, quite interesting. We also have the Glasgow City Innovation District, which we are a key partner of. Um, so that's our campus in, in Glasgow. A little bit about our history. We are a, a very old institution, being established in 1796. Um, and we were at that time heavily focused in technology. It is still a leading technological university, but we are also, um, you know, our business and the business school is one of the best in the UK as well. We are one of the first technological universities, um, I think in the world really, but we are a multi award winning university. So um, I like to say that the Times Higher Awards are the Oscars of higher education. They are very, very important in the UK and globally, I think. So we are the first and only university to win it twice. So university of the year. Um, and one of the things that truly underpins Strathclyde um, is this ethos of useful learning. So it underpins everything we do um, from our research, our teaching, they all have to have a practice focus. Um, and from the two programmes that we'll talk about today, that's what we want. We want for you to come out with these qualifications, but also have a useful application of the knowledge that you have. So our MBA, the Strategic FinTech programme, are all underpinned by practice. A little bit about Strathclyde Business School, or SBS, as we, as we call it. We were founded in 1948, um, and that is our shiny new building um, that we have, again, in the heart of Glasgow. Um, we are a very, again, practice oriented business school. We are top 10 for business research. So although we are, you know, practice is through everything we do, we are also very research intensive. So what that means for you, if you're joining our programs, it means that the academics that teach you are publishing at the cutting edge of their field. So to be top 10 in the UK for that type of research, that is quite an accolade 
Um, we number one in Scotland as well. Um, and we're only a number of a few business schools that hold that triple, um, triple accredited charter. So to be triple accredited, it means that we have to continually update um, our standards, our processes, how we work. So uh, that's why only a few business schools in the world have that triple accredited status. We also have the small business charter, which shows that we are not just focused on you know, the big corporates, but actually the SMEs that drive a lot of economic activity around the world. One of the other things I would draw your attention to is the prime, um, the prime logo at the bottom of the screen. So what that means is principles for responsible management education. So that's at the cutting edge of socially progressive management. So really pushing the boundaries of what does it mean to be in management education and how does that then filter through into you as managers or leaders of the future? So we are, we are totally ingrained in that. We're ingrained within our, our ecosystem. Like I said, we have the Glasgow City Innovation District, but we're not just inward looking. So we're not just Glasgow focused, not just Scotland focused. We are a global business school. Um, as you know, we have centers all over, over the world um, and we research and teach across the globe. So I know we have the video lined up and ready to go. So um, that's about the business school. The video is a bit more about the, um, the broader university, but it's good to see. I don't think we're going to see this video tonight. <laughs> we can put a link in. <laughs> Will I just continue with the presentation? Okay, we can share the link, don't worry. Don't worry. It just lets you see where we, where we are and the kind of things we're interested in. Um, but again, we can, we can share that. So like I said, we are a global, um, we are a global business school. Um, and specifically talking about the MBA. Now, the Strategic FinTech programme, um, although it's not an MBA that sits within the same kind of unit in the business school, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but we were one of the first business schools to launch a full-time MBA programme in 1966. And we had huge diversity within that first cohort, which was very unusual um, for that time. We then launched a part-time programme in 1976 and Flexible in 1983. As you can see, we've, um, we are all over the globe um, at the moment, um, international centres everywhere. And I think the move to digital has kind of brought us closer in some ways. Um, you know, our partners, we work together in a much more kind of coherent way, I feel. Um, so we are, we are a, a global international network of partners. And you can see some of the, the locations there, Bahrain, UAE, Oman, Malaysia, um, Singapore, and, and Europe as well. We should also put um, Glasgow there because Glasgow is the kind of hub and home um, of the MBA. And uh, I was going to say last year, but I forgot it's 2022. So two years ago, we did get our silver anniversary um, being a partner in Bahrain. So we've been here quite a long time. We're well established. Just to give you an overview of the kind of faculties and departments. So within the university, we have four key faculties, academic faculties, um, engineering, science, human, uh, humanities and social sciences, and obviously the business school. So you can see our color code in here. Um, if you notice, everything to do with the business school is red. <laughs> Um, it helps with our helps with our branding. So we have got um, the four faculties. We 
one thing that makes Strathclyde really different to other universities is this cross faculty working that we talk about. So in some other institutions, they're very siloed. They work within their faculties. They don't collaborate. They don't kind of work with each other. What you'll find in Strathclyde is that we collaborate across the faculty. So we have research projects and teaching that happens across all of these four faculties. And we draw in expertise you know, from different faculties when we need them. For the MBA in Strategic Fintech, what's interesting to you guys is within the business school, we have a series of departments. So all of these departments that you see listed here, and you can see the MBA and international unit has been a kind of separate entity. While that's true, we work with all of these other academic um, departments. So the people that teach on um, the accounting and finance, for instance, are drawn from those departments. People that work on um, you know, human resources come from our work, employment and organisation department. So we as a unit coordinate all of the different departments so that when you're being taught, you're being taught by the key people from each of um, the departments of the business school. Could also be that you're taught by somebody from a different faculty as well, if they've got expertise within a particular area. One of the things I'd like to talk about is the centres of excellence at Strathclyde and the business school. So I've kind of mentioned that a lot about us not just being, you know, academics, but also having a practice focus. That's what these centres of excellence are. So we do work that's at that interface between academia and practice. So I'll take a few examples here. I won't go through all of them. Um, but the Fraser of Allender Institute is like Scotland's economic think tank. So they do all of the economic analysis. So for Scotland's COVID recovery, these are the people that are working on it. And these are the people that teach on your MBA and strategic fintech. Colleagues at the, the SCARE or the Scottish Centre for Employment Research, they you know, will advise the government on new policies and practices for work. So our academics, well, yes, having the research track record are also um, part of some of the, the kind of policy making and um, you know, practice working with organisations. So that's about the, the kind of the, the school and um, the wider university. If you have any questions on that, I'm happy to take them. Um, but we can keep it to the Q&A as well. Um, so a little bit about the MBA. So we'll start with the MBA and then we'll talk a little bit about strategic fintech. So the MBA, we have this famous triangle, um, which kind of outlines the structure of the MBA. So you'll see that to get the full MBA, you need 180 credits. And you can see the foundation of the triangle is what we call making the business work. So this is all of your kind of functional aspects of, of running an organisation. So things like marketing, ops management, they're all there. You then have um, your personal development uh, uh, angle here, which we call the reflective practitioner. So this is really looking at you as an individual. You know, what's your learning journey? What, what's your view on your own leadership style? How can that be developed? So this is very much about you as an individual. Um, as Karim said, I am a, a, a strategy ex expert. So obviously I like this part, which is um, the, the strategy classes. One thing that sets our MBA apart from everybody else is the amount of um, strategic content we have in it. So we have three kind of core strategy modules where you will learn different perspectives on strategy, different tools and approaches that you need. And then we have that strategic consultant in practice. So we call that like our capstone class. And in that class, you work with um, an organization who has a real life problem. So you work in a, a safe environment, but you work to solve that problem as a consultant would. So drawn on all of your experience that you've had in your previous classes. Then the kind of pinnacle 
of the, the triangle is your electives or your project. So your electives is where you can take something that you're really interested in and go ahead and, and kind of become an expert in it. And that's exactly what your project does as well. So something that you are really passionate about, you can do that as a, a kind of 40 credit project um, so that you you're, um, can explore in depth. With the project, you are paired up with a, a supervisor, um, which will be an academic who will help you through that process. But essentially it's where you get to really develop your passion. So what are you really interested in? Your project's the pinnacle of your whole MBA. The learning approach, it'll come as no surprise that a lot of what we do in the MBA, while underpinned completely by theory, it's about engagement. So it's not really a programme where you can sit back and be passive. Um, you want to be active. You will be encouraged to be engaged and you know, have discussion, have um, debates, practice the techniques that we're, that we're showing you and introducing to you, and also learning from your peers. You know, as a, as a teacher, as a lecturer on the programme, I learn so much every single time I teach as well. And that's what we try and encourage in Strathclyde is to have that kind of constant dialogue, constant development of your thinking and your approach. So there will be materials there to support you, but then, like I said, a lot of facilitation and a lot of kind of discussion. So just to give you a kind of flow, uh, an, an overview of the flow of classes, so if you're in a traditional 10 credit module, which most of our classes are, um, you will start with a, an evening introduction session, um, which is normally about an hour to two hours sometimes, depending on the topic, um, on an evening where you will set out the kind of aims of the class, talk about the assignment and what's going to be covered. You then have local counselor sessions. And to me, these are invaluable. They really are. They they bring the learning to life for you guys. Um, and then you have your intensive seminar with the Strathclyde Academic. Um, and we call it intensive seminar because they are pretty intensive. Um, but we do get a lot done and um, over the weekend, two days. Um, and that's kind of where your key learning moments are. You then have follow-up sessions with your local councillor again, um, where you can, you know, you can talk about the local context, you can talk about, you know, more to help with the assignment and that kind of thing. Then you have your wrap-up again with the um, Strathclyde Academic, and that's just to kind of round the class off, discuss any issues with assessment, um, and have any other dialogue that you need. We then have about three weeks after that, your assessment submission, and that's all done through our learning environment. Okay, so submit your assessment. That's the kind of structure of our classes. So if you're sitting there still thinking, you know, why an MBA would it be would it be good for me? Some of the reasons that that people come to an MBA is you perhaps have a first degree or you know a lot of work experience in maybe your technical area and you want to start to move into you know a management position or you feel you're lacking in some of the, the areas you've maybe been promoted over time and you want to then start to think about you know progression. I feel when people come and they've, they've had a good work you know a good work experience the amount of that you will bring to the class will be amazing. Um, so it's really as a two-way exchange. Um, you bring your expertise, we teach you the theory, we all learn from each other. Um, obviously, I'm not going to mention it, but we know that MBA as a title, it brings prestige, it brings potentially other kind of opportunities. Um, but what a lot of people tell me once I've done their MBA is that it's life changing. And I know that sounds really dramatic and, and kind of grand. 
Um, but they do, they say, you know, when I came in, I thought about life in this way, and now I think differently. So there is absolutely something um, transformative with an MBA. Obviously, building your network and, you know, expanding it out beyond your experience that you have just now, that's also a, a key part. To give you a kind of overview of um, Bahrain from last year, this is our kind of intake um, demographic, if you like. So you can see um, quite a, a broad range of nationalities, a good gender balance as well. The thing I'd point out is the different industries that people come from. Um, so you're joining a really diverse cohort that has you know, so much expertise in it. So what will an MBA do? So apart from having the title and the letters after your name, um, like I said, people do think it's life changing. Um, it changes the way they think about things. It changes the way they think about organizations, it changes the way they think about themselves and their management role and their you know, career aspirations. All of that kind of changes. Um, and, and people start to see things in a much more complex Way. So they start to think about things in a holistic way rather than very functional or very focused. So it does open up your mind, it broadens your thinking. So why do managers matter? Sorry, there's some. So really, managers do matter. And I know it's one of these things, I don't want to get too academic with you uh, tonight. Um, but really, managers are the facilitators of work, let's be honest. Um, and we're managing all of these different aspects in every single day that we, that we look at. Um, what we do, we're problem solvers. So trying to negotiate all of these three different aspects is something that we will give you in the MBA. We'll give you skills to negotiate all of these um, aspects of uh, managers. So how might an MBA help? One of the things that we talk about is the use of language. So do you have the words to be part of a conversation within your organisation? What the MBA does is it gives you the ability to talk and act like a strategic leader. Um, grow your professional network and obviously it will get you in a space where you just want to continually learn over and over. Sorry, my printer started, so I don't know if you can hear that. Um, really what it does is it enhances all your confidence and capabilities. So we're not saying what you come in with with the MBA is, is not useful. It definitely is, but we're building on that. So we're building on what you come in as an individual, no matter where you are. And I know some people feel, oh, well, maybe I'm not at the right stage in my career for an MBA. No matter how you come into us, we build upon that, okay? So we look at you as individuals and we start to think about how to develop you. We have a, a career service as well that is dedicated just to the MBA. Um, and we start to get to think, you know, keeping an open mind, thinking about the disruption that comes into our lives. That's all part of that. So very people centered. So that's the MBA. Um, I don't want to steal Elvin's thunder too much, um, but I'll talk a little bit about the, the MSC Strategic FinTech, which is absolutely brand new. Um, I'm currently teaching a class on it just now, um, which I'll be doing straight after the, the open day. So I'll talk to you a little bit about it, but I won't go into too much detail in case um, I don't want to step in Elvin's toes. <laughs> so with the MBA, again, it's all about getting you the skills and the, the kind of knowledge. Again, with the strategic fintech, the MSC, while it's not an MBA, it is definitely a practice-focused MSC. And while, okay, it's a technical subject, this is not a technical degree. So it's more similar to an MBA than it is to a technology degree, for instance. We'll deal with the technology, we'll deal with technological train, uh, trends and 
you know, the influence they have on your organisation, but it's not a technical degree. It is very much a management degree. Okay. To give you a kind of overview of the structure, um, in comparison to the MBA, the classes are, are bigger classes, essentially, so there's more work to be done in each of the classes. Um, but as you can see from the titles here, it's about the management of digital transformation and finance. It's about regulation. It's about business model innovation. Um, so that's the class that I'm taking just now. Um, and it's really exciting. Um, there's so much good discussion in the class. Everyone has a has, you know, post experience. They've got tales to tell and stories. Um, so we bring the theory and um, they are bringing all of the examples as well. So hopefully you can see quite a balanced structure. But again, the key point is on this is management. So management of strategic fintech, not strategic fintech as such. One of the key parts of this MSc, if you can see along the bottom, there is the future of fintech class. So that runs across the kind of years. And what it does is it consolidates your learning so, through guest speakers, through um, detailed cases, examples. Um, we have that within each of the classes too, but that class kind of just ties it all together. And likewise with the um, MBA, you also have a pinnacle. So you have a capstone experience. And in this master's, it can either be a very traditional um, dissertation, it could be a practice project, so something based in your own working life, or you could start to think about a startup. So we can support all different kind of views of what people want. Again, very people centered. So if you're thinking, hmm, you know, I want to get into strategic fintech, I'm quite excited, I have a business idea. Doing this, you work through, you get the good foundations, and then we can help you with your business startup towards the end of your degree. So that's the kind of structure of this program. It's very student centric. Like I said, we bring the current theory, but it's about how to then use that theory, how to develop it. Um, yes, you will learn about the technologies, but more about how you as managers deal with those technologies. And one of the things that we always hear from people is, is that it's quite scary because the rate of change and digital disruption is driving so much change that it's quite difficult to manage or get your head around. And that's what this class then, uh, this programme brings. Just to give a, a little overview, I don't want you to read through all of this, but essentially, again, we will have it, um, this class blended. So a lot of materials will be available online before the class. And then you have very kind of intense, not as intense as MBA, I would say. <laughs> um, it's over a longer time period, the classes. Um, so again, though, it's all about getting that class discussion, debate, um, you know, testing out the tools, playing with the tools in a, a safe environment um, and learning about them. So um, again, like if I'm comparing it to the MBA, much longer because they're bigger classes, um, but still some intense um, working on it. So good luck with whatever you choose. We would love to see you at Strathclyde, obviously. Um, I will hang about until my class. <laughs> so I'll hang about and hopefully I can stay for the, the Q&A. But if there's anything on the chat you want to put in, um, please do so. And hopefully one day we might see you in Glasgow and have your graduation like the people in this picture. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marissa. A round of virtual applause for you for that presentation. <laughs> so about the MBA and the strike client and strategic fintech as well. If you have any questions, you can pop them in the chat as well. We will let you unmute yourself during the question and answer session and we'll come to that. You can even raise your hand if you have anything and I would reach out to you to answer your question as well. We're gonna try once more 
to have that video played. I'm not sure technical difficulties. Why wasn't it? It just didn't want to play on my laptop. So we now we're going to try with Elvin's laptop to see if that plays. And fingers crossed, I'm hoping that it does. Elvin, over to you. I like how we're all paused. Is it going to play? Is it not going to play? Is it going to happen? Just give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. I had no idea this was going to be this challenging. <laughs> As you can tell, determination is one of Stratlight's core strength as well. <laughs> we are very determined to play that video. <laughs> we will not be beaten. I don't think we have sound. Yeah, I, I can see the video, but not the sound. Sorry, are you not able to hear the sound? No. Did you click the sh optimize for sound clip option while sharing? Uh, just a moment. Perhaps not. So that means we're almost there because we can see the video. Now we just need okay. to hear it. OK. Okay, I'm just going to try that again. One more time. Yeah. Okay, should work. At the University of Strathclyde, we believe ideas can change the world. Our achievements have been recognised with the award of the Times Higher Education's UK University of the Year, the first institution to receive the prestigious honour more than once. This accolade follows our success as the Sunday Times Good University Guide Scottish University of the Year and the award of the Queen's Anniversary Prize for Excellence in Energy Innovation. Our multi-award winning community is improving health, safeguarding energy and using quantum to push the boundaries of imagination. We're addressing climate change where big ideas are needed more than ever. Our One Ocean Hub is working with 50 partners to transform the world's response to plastic pollution, rising sea levels and overfishing. Together, we're empowering those who are reliant on the ocean for food, jobs and transport while protecting it for future generations. In Scotland, we're bringing together the best minds from business, industry and government in the country's first innovation district. We're creating jobs and developing a place where shared ideas can thrive. Along the river, an international centre to drive innovation and skills development. Whether we're bringing space data to Earth or developing fintech, our technology is built with people in mind. We're supporting our people by creating an inspiring campus and investing in learning and teaching, research and innovation hubs. We believe our people's health and happiness is at the heart of our success. We've transformed our 
well-being services and our new Strathclyde sport facilities are empowering elite athletes and those who are trying something new. As a socially progressive university, we are committed to openness. We're bringing people of all backgrounds together, making an impact on our students, our city and our global community. It's a way of working that makes our alumni attractive to employers and draws partners from around the world. Working together, big ideas can improve the world. Brilliant. I'm so glad that the video played. And that is something that we teach you in the MBA, ladies and gentlemen, to stay determined. All right. We're going to have, thank you once again, Marissa. And thank you, Elvin, for having that video played as well. We are now moving on to hearing from our students, those who are have been there, done that, and those who are in there and doing it as of now. So next up, we have our MBA alumni, a cherished alumni that we have over here with us as well, who is an accomplished multi-skills leader who's worked as a marketing communications director and human resources manager with demonstrated experience in creating and executing communication strategies that promote brand reputation and organizational goals. She holds an elected board position with the Bahrain Society for Training and Development. And as she just recently, up until recently, was working with Temkin, the Labor Fund as well. Please put your hands together for the virtual stage, Zara Abdi. Zara, over to you. Thank you very much. And um, good evening, everybody. And thank you very much for the introduction. And to be honest, it's my pleasure and honor to be part of the session today. Uh, Marisa, she gave an excellent presentation. She covered almost everything. So I can add a little bit um, and walk you through my uh, career journey. Uh, as a, a strategic leader, a strategic leader university played, to be honest, a major uh, role in my journey. I started my career after uh, graduated from University of uh, Bahrain of, uh, uh, with a bachelor degree in chemical engineering. Um, after that, I worked, let's say, for uh, three years in um, GPIC. During that time, I was very much interested in NLP, the Neuro Linguistic Programming, uh, which took me um, to human resources management. And that encouraged me to um, get my first professional certificate from the CIPD. I moved after that to Temkin. It was back then Labor Fund as a human resources and administration specialist and as an HR person who can implement training need analysis, on myself and on my personal potential career progression plan, I realized that I need to um, be ready for any potential opportunities. Um, that's why I decided to bridge my uh, business, um, uh, to bridge the gap of my business knowledge uh, by doing MBA. And uh, the journey uh, started with the strategic light at that point. Um, uh, there was a, a, a long uh, uh, research to find out what is the best university that can provide MBA for a full-time employee. Um, so I was lucky to find the strategic light back then. Um, I moved on my career um, after obtaining the um, MBA from strategic light. Um, I climbed the ladder, I became a human resources manager, then public relations and events manager in Temkin, followed by marketing and communication director. My journey with Temkin ended last month, and now I'm establishing my own company. Uh, also, I'm doing my um, DPA, doctoral, uh, with the um, uh, strategic light as well. And uh, uh, my topic, or uh, let's say uh, my doctoral will be on social entrepreneurship, and it will be um, linked directly with my um, uh, future company. So always be ready and prepared for any potential unknown opportunities. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That was short, sweet and simple. And if you didn't catch that, everybody, she is an engineering graduate and she's also currently doing her DBA with us as well. So her student experience was bound to be good if she decided to continue with this as well. Let me thank you, Zara, for that as well. Now we will move on to the next hour. Please stick around. If the students have any questions, we'll direct them to you as well. 
All right, we're going to move on to our student who is currently with us mm. as of now as well, who started his executive MBA at the University of Strathclyde in 2021, who is a radio veteran and a media personality who has won an award for his radio show in Bahrain as well. And he has helped launch radio shows and radio stations in Dubai and the UK. He is the founder of A-List Media, which is a consulting firm that specializes in media management. But here's something that I found very interesting. He enjoys songwriting in his spare time and wrote the song Jatam Bahrain, which trended and reached number one in the international charts in Angami 2020 as well. So brilliant job done there, Ahmed. Let's put our virtual applauses towards the screen for Ahmed El Sayed. Thank you, Karam. I'm not going to ask you to, to sing it for us in case, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> we want people to join us, not quite yet. You know. <laughs> like a... All right, thanks, Karam. Now, good evening. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ahmed al Sayed, and I'm a second semester uh, executive MBA student here at Strathclyde. Now, before I uh, go into detail about why I decided to pursue uh, an MBA and why I chose Strathclyde, I'd like to provide you with a brief background about myself. Um, uh, so basically, I, as Karam said, I'm a songwriter, but that's not it. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in business studies from the, uh, from the UK, and I've spent the last uh, 20 years working in marketing and communications management for international and regional uh, companies in London, Dubai, and Bahrain. I was uh, the regional head of uh, marketing for Thomson Reuters, uh, one of the largest media companies uh, in the world. I also worked um, in marketing for Abu Dhabi Investment House, but I've always had a passion for media, as Karam said, uh, radio to be precise. And for many, re uh, for many years, I presented my own radio show and played a key role in uh, launching Dubai IFM. So if you're ever in Dubai, uh, tune into 103.8 and let me know what you think. Um, so yeah, and also I love writing music. And I recently, as Karam said, wrote uh, Jetem Bahrain. So feel free to listen to it at your own leisure and uh, go easy on me with the dislikes all right anyway so let's fast forward to the beginning of 2021 and i had just resigned from my uh, previous work um covid was in full swing at the time unfortunately it still is and i unexpectedly found myself with a lot of free time on my hands um now i had to decide whether to look for a new employment or establish my own business to be honest i had no idea what to do with myself. Um, I just thought this may be a blessing in disguise. And, uh, you know, I thought, you know, that this is a chance to start over and pursue something I enjoy. Now, while pondering my future steps, I, I remembered that I'd always intended to pursue a, a degree, a master's degree, but I've never actually done it. Um, I put it on hold for two decades, literally, um, because of many reasons for work, for family commitments, and the years passed, but the idea still remained in my head. Um, now, I reasoned to myself, I thought, why not now? Isn't it true that it's, it's better late than never, right? Uh, as they say. Anyway, I began my search for a good MBA program in the UK, because I'm used to, I'm, I lived there for a long time, so I'm familiar with uh, the educational system there. Uh, but the more I thought about it, the more I wondered if I truly wanted to, be, wanted to return to school and become a full-time mature student. Do I really want to leave my family and live in another country again? Um, don't get me wrong, I love the UK, but I really don't miss the weather over there, I'm not a fan. Uh, so, yeah, so plus, when I, what if I get a call for an opportunity or a dream job while I'm away as a full-time MBA student? Then it occurred to me, what if I could find a university in a strong MBA program that provided the same, if not better, standard of education, yet closer to home? And I looked at what is available regionally and locally, and the name Strathclyde kept uh, popping up, you know. Um, I did my own due diligence and rigorously researched the university and the executive MBA they offered at uh, BIBF. And the more I did that, the more positive feedback I got. And the more sure I became that this executive MBA was and is the right fit for me. Now, this degree, of course, uh, will give you other than the prestige and all that. It actually, as Marissa said, it does change your life because it gives me the literal experience that uh, I need right now, and I'll, I'll explain. So first of all, it is flexible. So it's spread over two years and the courses do take into consideration those who work full time because it's spread during long weekends and evening classes um, taught by quality professors and with students from all walks of life. It is ideal for me because it balances my time between my studies, work and family. Now Strathclyde is, of course, a triple 
accredited university and if you're into the rankings which i am and it's uh, not only the prestige but also knowing that it's an award-winning university and one of the top global executive business schools especially the mba the executive mba according to financial times rankings and the times as well um, i have found a strong finally found a strong mba program that meets all my requirements ticks all the boxes so i decided to take the leap of faith and and join now, I'm very glad I actually stayed in Bahrain since shortly after enrolling in Strathclyde in the Executive MBA, I received the call. And now I'm working on my dream project and started uh, my own business, A-List Media. Now, all, all that while holding a good MBA. And each class I take, each course, each subject I study literally provides me with the additional knowledge and practical real life examples taught by professionals. And that's additional knowledge and practical real life examples of how to successfully manage a business. So perfect timing. So this executive MBA covers everything from managing people to managing projects, marketing, operations, accounting, budgeting, finance. This couldn't have come at a more uh, better time for me. So I'm delighted I opted to stay and do an executive MBA at Strathclyde. Now, those considering an MBA should definitely consider Strathclyde. You will definitely not regret it. And so far, that's my story uh, with many more unwritten chapters to follow. Thank you very much for listening to me and thank you for the opportunity to start Thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. And we hope those unwritten chapters are full of good stories. Inshallah. We're gonna now, so we have heard the alumni of MBA and a current student doing the MBA program. Now we're gonna listen to Elvin Joseph who was involved in the launching of the FinTech program. who We were the first in the region to launch it back in 2020 as well. And Mr. Elvin Joseph was one of the key personalities in that whole project. So let's listen to his perspective and his insights when he was involved as to why do the FinTech program as well. Elvin, over to you. Thanks, Firm. Thanks, Ahmed and Sarah. I mean, that was beautiful. Uh, and thanks, Marissa, for the wonderful presentation. Um, welcome, everyone. Good evening. And uh, it's so excited. We're so excited to see you all here today. Um, it, it was quite interesting how the, the role of FinTech uh, plays here in Bahrain. Um, and it was interesting how the role came over to us from BIBF. So as you all know, we are with the BIBF, which is Bahrain Institute of Bank and Finance here in Bahrain. Uh, and so we work in partnership with the BIBF since 2016. And further to His Royal uh, Highness, um, uh, the King's mandate in 2018, where he, was, he had asked all uh, the banks and financial services to move into a digitally transformed uh, system and even to the government offices to move all their services online. And it was surprising right after that with the COVID uh, situation, all of the services and all of the banks were sort of disrupted with this, uh, with this issue. And then we realized, uh, or rather the government realized that there's less talent here in the country that can actually cope with this sort of disruption. And it was due, just before COVID, the uh, um, central bank had asked Strathclyde as one of the universities who was providing this back in 2016, uh, as the first UK universities to launch the, uh, the MSc FinTech program across Europe. And we, when we launched this year, it, uh, it was extremely popular. And um, I'm, I'm so reminded of this quote uh, by Chris Kinner, which says, ignoring a technological change in a financial system based upon technology is like a mouse starving to death because someone moved their cheese. You know? So that was the situation of what uh, banks and financial services were going through because they realized there is a huge gap and there were people missing for this. And so when we launched this program, um, we, we launched it in such a way that it was offered in the UK. But that involved highly technical courses. And we realized people are not ready for those highly technical courses. And so we had to modify it to what was required for the demand in the market. So just like Marissa previously said, um, we, this is not a technical degree. This is, this is like an, an MBA, but with all the, the recipe that is required for this market need. And so since we, we launched it, we have a huge number of people doing the program right now. And uh, for the second year, the central bank has announced another 10 scholarships, which means the program has been extremely good. People who are doing the program have been able to take exactly what they're learning in classroom to their workplace. And so uh, we're talking about senior executives, so leading banks to that digital transformation. So Bahrain is the home to the regions, uh, the five first hyperscale 
uh, data center, which is one of the first countries in the world to, to roll out nationwide commercial 5G. Uh, and so it's shifting its entire government to the cloud. And so what the pandemic did was sort of catalyze a digital evolution that was the oldest banking sector in the GCC, which is already um, adapting to a more digital world with initiatives like ELA Bank, which is a fully virtual bank where you're able to open your account sitting at home through your phone. And it's interesting, we were uh, talking to one of the students who, who was just about finishing his uh, MSc FinTech program. And he did this whole program from Jordan. And so he came to our center today and he was telling us about his experience. And so while he was doing the program, he was the head of IT for one of the leading banks in Jordan. And so just about when he's graduating, he's been made a, a CIO at the, at the bank. And he was saying how his bank was able to sort of lead the digital transformation for, uh, for, for Jordan. And so the, the other banks are, are sort of looking at that as a benchmark and sort of leading that digital journey. So it was interesting to see his takeaway on it and how he was able to sort of adapt the learning in a classroom to his workplace. So that's what basically the MSC Strategic FinTech program is all about. Um, I'm happy to take more questions. Thank you, Alvin, for that, for giving us the insight between or what goes on for the MSC Strategic FinTech as well. We will now move on to the question and answer session. And basically we're all here to take those questions as well. Just to recap, we had an information session about University of Strathclyde, about MBA and MSU Strategic FinTech. Then we heard from our cherished alumni, Sara. Ahmed spoke about his current experiences going on. And then we got a brief insight into the world of strategic FinTech and why do we have it in the first place over here? If there are any questions, we will now let you, please raise your hand, we will unmute you and then you can ask your questions as well. But let's start with a question that came in the chat and I will direct this to Elvin. This question is being asked by Manju who says that why is the program titled strategic FinTech instead of just FinTech? And is it more theory-based program and is there any machine learning included in the program? Elvin um, can answer and then Marissa can jump in if you have anything to add, Marissa. Sure. Uh, so like I just mentioned earlier, so the initial uh, program it was launched was a financial technology degree that involved coding um, and, and highly technical subjects, which was not a demand for the market or rather the market was not ready for it. Because at the end of the day, we have to see that uh, people who are doing this program are managers leading a company through that process of digital transformation. They're not coders, right? So the reason why it is transformed or rather the name was changed to strategic fintech is because it has the elements of managerial uh, program that helps a person identify what are global demands, what is required for that organization and how can I lead my organization in terms of uh, design innovation and executing or rather implementing the, pro uh, the, the design into the organization. So which is why we, we kind of changed the or rather modified the name to a strategic fintech program. And I'm sure so the, the program is also designed in such a way that the courses are uh, more of that nature. So Marissa will be able to speak more on the course curriculum. Yeah, exactly what you're saying, Elvin. Um, so while we don't do the technical side of machine learning, so we don't teach you to code, we're, we're not teaching Python or anything like that. Um, we would talk about machine learning and we would say, how might that impact your offering? So how would that impact your customers? Um, how would that impact the way you develop your strategy, for instance? So while we're not going into the intricacies of you know, machine learning or how to write an algorithm, we will talk about the impact that type of technology would have on business heat. Thank you, sir, Marissa. We will now move on to Mohammed Makhlouk. Before I just sent you a request to unmute your mic, you can ask a question. Hello. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So uh, I want to. I'm. I'm currently studying banking and finance in my last year of BS. Uh, how is study strategic fintech is going to help me like elevate my career, considering the position I'm in right now? Sure. Alvin, would you like to take that? You're on mute, Elvin. 
I just, <laughs> this happens so many times in a day. It's <laughs> if only we had a dollar for every time somebody said, I know. can you hear me? Am I on mute? It's like, with Dr. Rich, about that. please go ahead. <laughs> so, uh, like you mentioned previously, um, um, so there is a huge gap for people who have, who rather require the skill set to sort of lead their banks or financial services. So, but I want to take it out of the context of banks and financial services, because when it comes to FinTech or rather digital transformation, it is a disruptor in every sector or rather every industry. So, uh, so it's interesting, change is seen as a threat, but uh, less and less people see it as an opportunity to change. And so, um, the MSC Strategy FinTech is a program which sort of helps you give you the right tools and resources to sort of understand what do you require in order to take your organization, whether it be a banking or a financial service, or it could be a food delivery service or, um, um, or a taxi service that can be moved to a digitally transformed segment. So this program sort of gives you this, those skills and resources to sort of adapt to that. I'm not sure. Uh, did I answer your um, question correctly, Mohammed? Yeah, Mohammed would have unmuted himself, so he can't unmute. Mohammed, you can put it in the chat. So we have a quick question for Sara, actually. Sir, what did you find most challenging during your period? Because you were a part time student and you were working and studying as well. So, how was it? How did you manage the challenge? Um... <laughs> it was really challenging to be honest, but if you have the determination and you are really willing to get your MBA, you will um, get sufficient time to manage your family, business, and also your um, uh, full-time job and uh, uh, the MBA as well. So it's all about your determination. It's all about your decision. This is a journey and you want to go through this journey and obtain your MBA. Enjoy the journey as much as possible. Try to obtain friends, to try to obtain a kind of uh, uh, supporting, let's say, um, uh, um, ecosystem around you in order to uh, make that journey more, let's say, useful and fruitful. Brilliant, Sarah. I think that was just a way of asking, how hard is it? Yes, Ahmed. <laughs> Karim, I'm just going to add um, my two cents on the same uh, regarding do, the challenge. Do. So I'm doing it right now, so it's it's, it's fresh and, um, and and it hits home as well. So, I mean, obviously, I've been away from studies for a long time, uh, progressed my career. Going back to it, uh, the beginning, it was a bit of a challenge to, to readapt and, and get the hang of things. Um, but what I would advise those who want to do an MBA, um, first of all, if you have if you think that working nine to five, and if you had your own business, you'll have more time to do an MBA. Think again, when you have your own business, it's a 24 hour thing. So you really need to be, ba you need to be disciplined. Um, as soon as you get the assignments and coursework, I wouldn't leave it last minute. Try to give yourself enough time and pace yourself. Uh, and as Sara said as well, uh, surround yourself with, uh, get to know the students because everybody's in the same boat here. So, and, and you'll get a nice different variety and range of experiences. You have the engineers, you have the accountants, you have the marketers. So take advantage of that. And of course, um, what I noticed as well, um, obviously the friendly staff at Strathclyde, so they're always helpful. Malishka is here, of course, yourself, Karam and Elvin. So these three are, are your core, so feel free to bother them. They've never said no, they've always been kind to us. Um, and of course, the professors and the lecturers here in Bahrain, um, their email is available and they respond pretty fast. I know it's challenging now because of COVID um, that they're not physically in front of you. However, even with the whole virtual thing, I've never felt that they're away. They're always accessible. One way or another, you will get, you will reach them in the time that you, you want. Just pace yourself and um, do a lot of reading, read all the coursework in advance and, uh, and yeah, enjoy the ride like uh, Sara said. Thank you, Frank. Like to... Have you got something to add? Yeah, I mean, uh, and so it, it's funny because although I work for StartLed, I'm also doing the StartLed program, so I'm just finishing my uh, my project, so I'm towards the end of the MBA, so I'm able to see things from the inside as well as a student, and it's been an amazing journey for me also, and the kind of friends that you make on the program are phenomenal, and they're friends for a lifetime. So, um, and I tell this to, to people who join the program, so when you start the program, you may meet 25, 30 new students. And so when you move to the next semester, you meet a new couple of, uh, uh, you know, uh, friends. And by the time you finish your MBA, you've made at least 200 new friends. And these are great networks 
that you're taking over uh, in your lifetime, you know. And then again, you're part of an alumni. And so Structlet has been here for almost 25 years. So we have a huge pool of alumni. Uh, and it's a strong uh, sort of a brotherhood, I would say, <laughs> where everyone gets to meet with each other and they kind of help with one another. And we have this um, alumni meet once in a while where you get to meet someone who's like, hey, he's actually a family member of mine who's actually done the program. <laughs> And considering how small Bahrain is, everybody would know someone who's done the program. So. <laughs> Thank you, Elvin. Nima had raised his hand as well. Sorry, Nima, we had to ask you to hold on for a while. I've just sent you the first to unmute. Uh, hello, everyone. I just had a question, but after the students uh, ask their question, I think maybe I should email it at SQ. I just wanted to say um, I'm, um, I'm about to finish my uh, master. Um, uh, program on uh, international entrepreneurship and my thesis uh, is on working uh, crowdfunding uh, and uh, is it okay to uh, apply for a master again uh, in this program um, and as I see everybody is here in Arabs uh, and um, I'm a little uh, not sure about uh, because I'm Iranian is it just for Arabs program or anybody else can <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, no no not at all yeah. not at all actually uh, I'd like to answer that question if that's okay. So, if thank you, yeah, uh, just just ignore the sensors over here. It likes to remind me to walk every few seconds. So, and there we go. Let there be light, and light is there. All right. So, to answer that question, Nima, thank you for that once again. First of all, absolutely not. It is not specific to any region at all. The program is fully taught in English, and uh, you've already done your master's, so as long as you're good with English, and there is an English proficiency requirement for you to join as well, you're just required to do that, and everything else should be fine, because that's, that's nothing for you to worry about at all. Regarding you already doing one master, and if you want to do it again, Elvin just gave an example of the individual from Jordan who was just in the program. He did his MBA, and then he realized that okay, he needed a bit more of a technical degree at the time, and he did his master's again as well. So if you feel like FinTech is what you want to be involved in, because it is the future, which it definitely is, in terms of digital transformation and all things related, then you should definitely think about doing it as well. And the way I look at it is that you can really bring a unique perspective from entrepreneurship management and your experience with the masters and the bachelors and from a different country as well. You definitely would be able to bring a different perspective to the program. So if you want to you know, discuss that further, we'll be happy to take that offline as well. We've got a couple of questions in the chat as well. And I see that Ali, um, Ali Aman has hold up his hand, but Ali, just hold on. We have this one question coming in from Sarah, who has talking about how is the program related to regulators or would it relate to regulators at all? Elvin, over to you. Sorry, could you repeat the question again? I was just... Sure, sure. Actually, let me answer that as well. Hold on. Yeah. Can you guys see the screen? Not really. Correct, yeah, because my screen share is not working. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I'm not sure why that's happening. All right, just to answer that question, Sarah, uh, among the programs that we have, there's the HD Digital Transformation, of course, and then there's one whole module for 20 credits, which talks about economic and regulatory policies for fintech. So we have a full module that is delivered for fintech for regulators along. Of course, when you're a regulator, it's not that you just need to have that information specific. You need to know everything else related to the whole field as well. So while equipping you with the necessary skills to form a strategy for fintech, we're going to talk about regulations and policies in specific. Hope that answers your question. Now we're going to go with Ali. Are you yeah, hi. Uh, good evening, everybody there. And thanks for a nice presentation. I'm just wondering because I'm, uh, I graduated 20 years ago from University of Bahrain in science. And uh, I work all these uh, 20 years on uh, education sector. I was a, a science teacher and uh, education specialist for uh, 14 years. And I'm just uh, early retired from the uh, last uh, retirement program. So uh, I'm interested actually in, in changing the path of my career to, to a new era for, for the future. So I'm interested in, in, uh, in the, uh, the FinTech uh, things. But uh, the question is, uh, you said that this program is for the 
the people may need is as a managerial skills and manager level uh, program. So uh, is it okay for me or uh, to start uh, start this MBA for changing my my career to to the next twenty years in the future? I mean, Alvin. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that, Ali. That's, that's a really valid question. And uh, I've come across a very similar question many times, for, especially for people who don't have a fintech or a bank and financial background, and or rather people who have been working in bank and financial services and have not been in for a while. They've asked, will this program sort of help me change my trajectory in terms of if I want to go back into that sector, will it help? And in the program, uh, currently in our program, we have had many, a couple of our students who have come back who have not been working um, either in banking, financial service, or some people in government, uh, in military, who are doing this program. So uh, is it possible to do this program without any sort of understanding of this thing or a prerequisite? Yes, you can, uh, because it is a program that has elements of, of management fundamentals of this, or rather what digital transformation is, how can this be adapted in different sectors? So you go through all of that. And what you're doing is um, you are in a classroom wherein we bring in global leaders who drive different companies uh, through this process. So you're hearing firsthand information about these, uh, these processes in place. So is it doable? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ali. We now move on question that came from Fadil, which is quite an interesting question. He said that he has been working in Elba, specifically in the finance department for the past three years, but he wanted to know what would he gain from studying FinTech in particular. To Sarah and Ahmed, I thank you for your patience because most of the questions that are coming are mostly about surrounding FinTech because it's the new thing. And I think you both did a very good job of the MBA. So people don't have a lot of questions for the way you explain things. So we'll go with Elvin over for that question. Sorry, could you repeat that again, um, Carl? Sure, sure. The question is, Fadil has been working for three years in, in the finance department in Alba. How would studying FinTech benefit him? Right. So uh, like I said previously, so FinTech is not just confined to banking and financial services. It is across all sectors. So uh, it's there with health and, uh, and science, it's there with ins insurance, it's there with the property, it's with, there with regulations. So it is a um, it is a disruptor in every segment. So, so the, the strategic FinTech program is one that sort of enables you and gives you the right tools and resources and gives you, uh, puts you in a sort of a, um, a sandbox where you're able to sort of uh, play with some of these resources and sort of understand how can I adapt this in my workplace? So if I'm in Alba and if I need to transform my financial system, um, do I have the right skill set? Perhaps not. And so when you're doing this program, you're able to understand this is where I, um, I need to fill my gap in. And so uh, you, you see in the course curriculum, you'll see towards the end that there's a project that you'll be able to do or even a business startup. So your project can be based on how can I sort of transform our financial system into a digitally uh, uh, sort of enabled process. So during the program, you are sort of equipped with those uh, tools. Brilliant. Thank you, Alvin. We are almost nearing the end of our time. So if we do not get back to you with your question, we do apologize. And you can always reach out to us with the various ways that you can reach out to us. One more question that was there by Mantra is that are we going to learn trading? that is options and cryptos in this program. Unfortunately not, there is a way where you talk about these things where in the managing digital emerging technologies. So you do cover these topics, but there's no specific module that teaches you how to do that in detail as such. There was another question about the curriculum of the program in which you talked about that the previous program was very technical. That is true. I just read out the curriculum, Kaula. You asked a question, a couple of modules that you're covering, the topics are leading digital transformation in a financial context, global developments in fintech, you've got economic regulatory policies for fintech, fintech strategy and business model innovation, transforming customer experience through fintech, and mastering digital technologies. And all of it has a layover with future of fintech, which is the current developments and everything all on that note. All right. 
Are there any questions? Wait a minute. Yes, there are. So Zaini was asking that she has been working for two years now. Is it the right time to pursue her master's degree now in fintech? And this is a question we get a lot, a lot. Elvin, would you like to take that? I would say there's never a wrong time to start a program. So I've had a 65 year old who came and asked me a few days ago, can I start my MBA? And uh, I asked him, why do you want to do an MBA now? And he said, well, I manage a company which has 3,000 people who work for me. And, and every kid who works for me has an MBA. I want to know what this is about. So, <laughs> so, so similarly, I don't think there's ever a time to stop learning. And so even when it comes to FinTech, um, I don't think that should be um, it, just because you haven't worked for a while that shouldn't stop you from pursuing a, a learning uh, career. Brilliant. Thanks, Elvin. There is another question by Nasser, who is saying that he's a recent graduate from Bahrain Polytechnic and is interested in the FinTech program. Once again, a lot of interest in FinTech, so you know, that makes me happy as well. Is that should he prepare himself with professional certificates or just go ahead and enroll in the FinTech program, considering that his business background may be a little bit weak because he's an IT graduate? Alvin? I mean, it's a personal interest. And so if um, if someone who wants to do, uh, or rather go in a specific area, for example, a CFA or a CPA, that will lead them to a very specific area or a niche uh, sector. Uh, if you want to be a CFO of a company and things like that, yes, absolutely. You do have to pursue a professional um, course, but a FinTech, a strategic FinTech program is more on a managerial role where you are able to manage not just uh, your company, and but at the same time, people, their expectations, and so on and so forth, where you're answerable not just to to a, a small set of people, but you're managing an entire organization. So it gives you an overall or holistic view, just like an MBA. Uh, at the same time, um, a professional course is very specific to its nature. So a CFA or a CPA or a, something that's related to accounting or finance is very specific. Um, but so we don't entirely cover that in the strategic fintech program. Thank you, Alvin. A very technical question that has come in from Andres is asking, will any of the modules cover integration between blockchain technology and crypto with traditional finances and businesses? I believe that there's no one specific module that does that, but that's the recurring theme throughout the program as well. So modules such as global development in fintech and mastering digital technologies both talk about it and they both, they both deal with blockchain, crypto, and dealing with that and how do you digitally transform that from the traditional finances and businesses as well. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all the time we have for you today. We don't wanna keep all the, the Sarah and Ahmed who came in were so gracious enough to be present here with us with the evening as well. We thank you for your time. We do apologize if you were not able to take any questions. You're more than welcome to reach out to us at any point. You can give a call to BIBF or just email us at strikeflight at BIBF.com. You can just log on to the BIBF website and you'll probably see my face as well, albeit with a lot shorter hair, uh, to book an appointment with us as well. So you can just reach out to us for that as well. Once again, thank you for your time. Strikeflight University is known to be a place of useful learning. That is the tagline that we work with. And that is what we hope that you come to be with us on a journey for it to be a place of useful learning for you. And we appreciate all of you, Sarah, Abdeen, and Ahmed Al Sayed. Thank you so much for joining us. Elvin, thank you for answering those questions brilliantly as well. Milishka, always thank you for being there and being a constant cheerleader as well. To everybody who asked questions, interacted with us, we thank you for that and we wish you a good night. Ahmed, do you have something to say? I see you unmuting your mic. No, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity and uh, I wish everybody the best. Thank you, Ahmed. I appreciate that. Sarah, any comments from you? Thank you very much. Thank you. Brilliant. Ellen, would you like to add anything before we close the meeting? Well, once again, thank, thank you. you. We wish you a good night. Bye-bye.